The Boss GT1000 core is a Swiss Army knife in a compact form factor, relatively speaking. It's a good option as a standalone unit, but I really think it shines when it's integrated into a pedal board. But is it right for you? Let's find out. What is up everyone? Man Von Melod here. In my never ending pursuit of updating my pedal board, pretty sure we're going on three years now, I wanted to see if I can incorporate the GT1000 core into it. There definitely are positives and negatives in using this pedal in a pedal board. For me, I think the positives outweigh the negatives, but for you, it's going to depend on your needs and preferences. First of all, if you're unfamiliar with this pedal, it's essentially a compact version of the full size GT1000. In the core, which I'll be referring to this pedal as, Boss got rid of the foot pedal, seven foot switches, and several audio and control connections, but you still have the capability of using all those connections in the software, but not all of them simultaneously. To me, these changes make the core better suited for a pedal board, because many of those functions and connections are already available if you're using a pedal switcher like the Boss ES8, and the small size is much more ideal for a pedal board. I should mention that you can use the Boss Tone Studio software to create, modify, and set up patches in the core. This isn't necessarily a benefit of using this pedal in a pedal board, but I'll be using the software to visually show you guys some of the features. One great benefit of the core is that it has a bajillion effects. Maybe not a bajillion, but it does have a lot and it has just about every pedal you would need. You can have up to 23 effect blocks active. That includes one pedal effect, one compressor, four equalizers, two distortions, two noise gates, two amp sims, four normal delays, one master delay, one chorus, one reverb, and four effects blocks. In the effects blocks, you have 28 options to choose from, including acoustic guitar sim, acoustic resonance, auto wah, chorus, classic vibe, compressor, defretter, distortion, feedbacker, flanger, harmonist, humanizer, mastering effects, octave, overtone, pan, phaser, pitch shifter, ring modulator, rotary, sitar sim, slicer, slow gear, sound hold, s bend, touch wah, tremolo, and vibrato. You might have noticed there are chorus and compressor effects options where the pedal also has chorus and compressor effect blocks. The compressor types are identical, but the chorus types are not. I'm a big fan of the CE1 chorus only available in the effects blocks. Aside from specialty effects, it pretty much has every effect you would need. The next question I'm sure you have, is every effect usable? I would say probably. Are there better external pedal options for each effect? More than likely but it ends up becoming a trade-off between tone and space. It's really going to depend on your tastes. For me, and I'm sure for many guitarists, there are certain effects that just need to be perfect and others that you can let slide a little bit. Some effects that the core just can't replace for me are my Strymon Timeline Delay, Fortinzool Noise Suppressor, Empress Compressor, Crybaby from Hell Wah, and Tube Screamer Clone. I'm mainly using the core for my EQ, Chorus, Flanger, Phaser, Reverb, Volume Pedal, and an additional delay when I'm using Parallel Delay in my soloing patches. Can I get better modulation tones out of my Mobius or better reverb tones out of my Silver Lake? Maybe, but to me the reduced footprint on my pedal board isn't worth the small difference in tone I might get from those pedals. But it's really up to the user preference. There are a couple things I would have liked to see in this pedal. First is, I would have liked the four normal delays to have more options like the master delay. Pretty much, I think they should all be master delays. They're essentially digital delays. To me, that makes them useless. The other thing I would have liked to see is the ability to place multiple reverbs. This could easily be done by adding an option in the four effects blocks like they did with the chorus. This isn't that big of a sticking point, but I'm pretty sure there are some cases where another reverb or two would come in handy. I know I mentioned this early on, but looking at how many pedals this can replace, the size is a huge bonus. I'll be replacing my Mobius EQ200 Silver Lake Reverb and Flashback Mini with this one pedal. Talk about some space savings. If we want to add the core to our pedal board, there is one issue that we need to figure out. Having a slew of effects is great, but you'll probably want to place those effects throughout your signal chain. Maybe you want to put some effects before the amp and some in the effects loop, or you want to fit some real pedals in between the core effects. Can we do that? Of course we can. We can do this with the two send return channels. These can essentially break the core into three separate channels. The first pedal section would use the mono input as the input and send one as the output. The second would use return one as the input and send two as the output. And the third would use return two as the input and the mono output as the output. In the software, you would use the two send returns as your dividers between the pedals. All the effects between in and send return one would be the first pedal. The second pedal would be everything between send return one and send return two. And the third would be everything between send return two and the output. You could then hardwire the core into your effects chain or connect it to a pedal switcher, such as the Boss ES8, like I do. 
While being able to divide up the locations of the effects in the car, it is limited to only three sections. So if you needed to send out each individual effect separately, you wouldn't be able to do that. More than likely, I think you'll be okay with three sections. I actually only use two sections with my timeline in an effects loop, but it's something to keep in mind. Of course, we need a way to control this pedal in order to change effects, move them around, or to do a multitude of things. You bet this thing comes equipped with MIDI control. It even uses the smaller 3.5 mm TRS connectors that Boss has been putting in their 200 series pedals. Finding inexpensive cables isn't easy since you'll typically need 5 pin MIDI to 3.5 mm TRS cables, but the compact size is nice. I ended up making my own cables. The car also has expression control as well as various control IO in case you wanted to use other control inputs such as external switches or you wanted to control an amp. This can also be done using the ES8, but it does give you additional control inputs and outputs if you need them. One thing I think I should mention about this pedal is even though it is a little on the expensive side, retailing at 750 USD at the time of this video, it can be a really good starter pedal. Meaning since it pretty much has every pedal you'll need and you can put some pedals in front of the amp and some in the effects loop, it would work as a standalone pedal with an amp. Then as you find effects that just aren't cutting it, you can replace it with another pedal. Just a thought for someone who doesn't want to spend two or $3,000 on pedals all at once. There are some additional benefits of having the core in your pedal board. One of which being the control output knob. Using this, I can control the final output from my pedal board, which affects all my patches and channels on my amp. I set everything up with the output knob at 12 o'clock, but if I want to jam alone and don't need excessively high volume, I can turn it down with the volume output on the core and it affects all three channels on my Mesa equally. I don't have to adjust each volume separately and hope they're all balanced. It also works great when the sound guy tells you to turn your amp down, which has never happened to me. Another cool feature is that it can be used as an amp replacement if you're in a squeeze. For instance, you show up to a gig and your amp is dead. The core includes 23 different amp models, so you should be able to come up with some good tones. I have a few patches made if something like that happened. Well, there you go. I think the GT1000 core is definitely a great option to add to any pedal board. Hopefully, I gave you guys some ideas of how you could use it. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. But hey, until next time, rock on. Oh.